danger ahead. They're waiting for this. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. What is coming? What are the potentials? A lot of stuff to talk about. We are in the holiday season. We, which is a time where we spend money, right? Yes, we do the Thanksgiving thing, which is already over. We travel on Christmas. A lot of people travel. A lot of people spend a lot of money on the meals, the presents, decorations, all kinds of stuff. Good deals out there. Black Friday, we're all in the Cyber Monday, the, the weekend with all that stuff going on. And there are good deals to come. But what could be coming? First off, please subscribe. Ring the notification bell for all. Share the videos. Do all those things. I appreciate it. That's how we grow this channel. That's how we reach more people. All right, so what do I think is going to happen? And I could be wrong. I'm just a guy doing the things, trying to be prepared as possible, trying to encourage you guys, uplift you guys, and empower you guys, because that's what's more important, getting you guys to think about things, not just telling you exactly what to do. So let's get into this. Say, for example, you, like most Americans probably, spend a lot of money in the holiday season. So after the holiday season, what do you have? You have less money, right? Okay, so for example, if people really want to control you, how do they control you? Food, water, money, those kind of things. All right, the availability of supplies, the cost of stuff. So what if they jack things up? What if they have been keeping things down yeah, you know, playing a little game. You know, they play the game. They play the game with gold. They play the game with silver. They play the game with diesel and fuel and stuff like that. You know, releasing from our national from our national stockpiles or strategic reserves to keep you know prices down until you know those you handed in your piece of paper and did all that. Now they don't care because you know they got what they wanted and everything. So, what if they jack things up and or allow the shortages to happen? And then you're a little SOL, stuff out of luck, right? You know, because now you are in a worse financial situation. I'm not saying don't enjoy Christmas. What I am saying is be smart about it, though. Hold some back. Have a frugal Christmas. We really like, you know, for us, Christmas is very special. It's about the birth of our Savior and the true meaning behind Christmas. Love, family, gatherings, enjoying company. That's what's important. We haven't been as good about it as, as, as we mean to be, but we try to get, you know, the kids like one good present and maybe a couple little things. You know, fill their stockings, gotta do the Santa Claus thing, right? Uh, well, you don't have to. Some people don't celebrate it, you know, because the meaning is, is disturbed and it's all convoluted and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, it's about the kids. I mean, it is important for the kids. So we really emphasize the true meaning behind it, but also give. So find the good deals. Limit Christmas a little bit. Hold some back just in case things get worse because I have a feeling they will. I, I know they will. We're on a slide right now uh, because, you know, we need to be smarter than the government. That's one thing we need to do. How can we be smarter than the government? Well, what does the government do? The government spends and spends and spends and prints money, which is, what is money when they print it? It's just debt. They're printing debt. What do we, what do I think you should do? <laughs> what do we do? We don't have debt. I don't like debt. Debt is evil. So don't go into debt, for sure don't go into debt for Christmas. Hopefully you were smart and you've been saving up for it. That's the best way to go about it. I like cash on the barrel. <laughs> Charles Ingalls from uh, Little House in the Prairie. Yeah, one of our favorite shows. I know it's a little old school for some people, but yeah, we really like that show. Not going to debt means you can't be controlled as easily. And it will allow you to be in a much better financial footing than if you are if you owe a whole bunch of money and you're just struggling to keep up with those payments. So please don't do that. 
Hold a little bit back. Be smart about what is coming. We have to look ahead. Yes, Christmas is important, but we have to be smart about what we're doing. We can't, um, we can't overextend ourselves to the point where we'll truly be in trouble when things really start getting worse because they're going to get worse. You know, there's rice shortages, diesel shortages, um, people not um, exporting stuff. We see shortages all over the place. And prices, whoo, I do most of the shopping for our family. Um, and yeah, wow. Uh, we hear about, you know, all the different uh, bird stuff and swine stuff and mad cow stuff and, you know, egg shortages and egg increases in prices. We see it, people. So be smart about it. Please be smart about it. And one thing of note, if I do a, a lot of stuff that's a little more in depth, a little more personal, and uh, yeah, cover a lot more topics also on Patreon. Links in the description below if you want to check us out there. Great. If you don't, that's okay. I get it. Some people don't want to pay for it. You know, some people don't support um, free market capitalism. They don't believe that anybody here should be making money from this, um, that we should just give it all for free and, you know, be communists. But, you know, it is what it is. Don't, you know, I'm not trying to pressure you. You, you do you. It's all free will. I'm a firm believer in free will. Um, I just throwing it out there so you know it's out there. Um, please. Also, I've had a lot of good content lately that hasn't gotten as many views necessarily. I feel it's worth watching. So please go back and watch some of my other videos. Um, also, if the videos aren't showing up in your feed, which happens a lot, just go to my channel, go to the video tab, and you'll see all the videos there. Um, and look back through. It's always, excuse me, it's always good. All channels, any channel you like, go back through and watch their stuff. It's view time, sure, it helps grow their channel, but it helps grow the community, it helps grow all the community, the preparedness community, so we can reach more people, empower more people, build more assets. This is coming down to a time when we need to keep cash on hand. I recommend taking your money out of the bank. What we do is we try to, we need to draw some more out, but we try to keep just enough money in the bank to do our, our bill, you know, pay our bills and stuff like that hold cash. A lot of people are talking about gold and silver. I hear ads for Genesis Gold Group all the time. Honestly, I, I get sick and tired of hearing that. I mean, but you know, I'm not knocking the channels that do that. Gold and silver is, it may be a viable thing. It may be something people want to do. I, you know, I don't do gold. Yeah, I have silver, but um, I would much rather have lead, copper, and brass, um, seeds, of both kinds and um, the ability to produce my own calories and food storage and you know equipment and tactical stuff and you know all those things much rather have all that than you know a pile of gold and silver but anyway free will you do you uh, I could be wrong it could become very valuable in the time in the days to come but make sure you're holding back make sure you're keeping don't overextend yourself very important um, check time okay um, don't want to meander on also, but there are some important things I want to cover um, within time constraints. How much cash should you keep and where should you keep it? Well, I like, I think bare minimum, you should keep at least a month, if not three months or more, six months, a year of your expenses, your bills, the things you need to live on. Keep that as your emergency fund. That's all prepping is. All this food storage, all this water storage, medical, tacticals, all the prepping stuff is just an emergency fund. It's your insurance. It's living insurance. It's insurance that you will live, that you might live. <laughs> we all know things can happen. We all know that we can't control everything. We can't prep for everything. All we can do is the best we can do. And having that, it's kind of like a strategic reserve. Like the, go the government, the country has strategic um, grain reserve, which we'll talk about, and strategic fuel reserve. Yeah, right? That's a good thing to have. So your emergency fund is your strategic reserve as well as your preps. Let's talk about the emergency or the um, national grain reserve. It's empty. There's no grain in it. Why? Because years back, I don't know when, they, uh, the, the government thought it'd be a great idea to say, okay, well, instead of having it in grain, we can hold it in cash. <laughs> great idea. 
when there's no grain to buy, when you're in a shortage where people need to tap into a strategic grain reserve, where are you going to buy it from? Because everybody else will be hurting. If we're hurting here in the United States, all the other countries in the world will be hurting probably worse than us. So who are you going to buy it from? What good is that money going to do? I'll tell you, nothing. So we don't have a strategic grain reserve like we did in the past. Think about that for a minute. Make your own strategic grain reserve. That's important. Like seeds. There's that big, huge international seed vault um, somewhere, Iceland, I think it is, or Greenland, somewhere like that. I forget exactly. I choose to have my own strategic um, seed reserve or seed vault. I care, I stockpile a lot of seeds because I want to be able to grow and produce for my family year after year. Kind of getting off topic here, I apologize. There is a lot to preparedness though, so it's like my mind just kind of goes and I sometimes I just go with it, go with the flow. Anyway, don't overextend yourselves. Make sure that you're spent using this time and these deals to get some good preps. But like I said, take it easy, be smart, that's what we have to do as preppers. We have to think ahead, not just in the moment. We need to enjoy the moment. Always make sure you're enjoying the moment. Live every day as if it's your last. But we need to prepare for the future. Anyway, I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. And blessings to you and yours.